Okay, we're rolling. Um, so uh, we'll have may have some people come in um, in, in in a bit, but um, for uh, for those of you who join us, um, uh, you all you all know and love Kevin. We all do, and uh, he's gonna um, take us through some uh, some some prompting of, of, of Chat GPT and uh, kind of give us some ideas about how to use that through um, through how you develop in your courses and how you do some of your um, you're thinking through your your tasks that you you, you do uh, every day. So um, I guess I'll, I'll, just, I'll just hand it over to Kevin. Uh, the session will be recorded and I'll keep an eye on the chat if there are any questions. So so thanks for being here, Kevin. Thank, thank, I sure appreciate that. Um, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just gonna be sharing my screen the entire time, obviously. Um, and what I wanna do is make sure that uh, I'm just sort of focusing on what is gonna help faculty uh, across the board, um, and I'm just I'm not going to be going on any of the philosophy or any of the background or what's right or wrong. This this isn't uh, AI church. <laughs> this is just going to be. Um, I'm trying to make sure I'm sharing the right thing here. One second here. Advanced portion of the screen. Share. Okie doke. Um, so you guys should be seeing my screen right now. Um, there are countless AI tools out there. This site, I'll, I'll share the link here. Jamie, do me a favor, remind me to make sure I share the link to that in the documents if I don't, because uh, okay. that's the kind of thing I'd forget. Anyway, right. this, this is futuretools.io, and it has um, 2,324 different kinds of tools that uh, some are for education, some are not. A lot of these things are embedded in other tools, um, and there's just a whole bunch of that, but uh, all the church stuff, <laughs> whether it's right or wrong, what's going to happen in the big picture, all that, I'm touching on none of it. All I'm going to do is talk specifically about chat GPT. Now, if you're familiar with it, um, and with just a few people here, um, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, with seven of us here, um, Anybody, is is anyone totally unfamiliar with it? You can turn on your mic and say, hey, I haven't even looked at this stuff before. Okay, so we don't have anyone who's gonna uh, basically cop to being um, totally green. So I assume you're gonna be familiar with how to, you know, what chat openai.com is how you go, how you check in. And I'm just gonna go through the prompts and some of the stuff that I've, that I've been working on that I really think is effective. Some of it uh, really, may not be in bounds. For instance, here's the first thing I've got. Uh, from the perspective of fair, dedicated college teacher, grade this paper in four areas with 10 point scale with 40 points, it's 100%, spelling, grammar, ideas, a unique message. So having the thing just grade a paper for you, you can imagine that the AI would say, I can't do that because that's a value judgment. But no, it says, um, Grading the paper and, and look at this. Now, all we're going to be doing today is looking at text. So I'm going to try to not go too fast because scrolling through text is sort of nightmarish. But you can see this thing. I gave it a little rubric. I told it how to grade it. And I say it because it's easy to anthropomorphize a program. And this is a program. And it and basically uh, you're interacting with it as though it's a human because it is, you know, a natural language. But I would just encourage people to not make that mistake. Um, so it, it, it said it said the paper is well written, engaging, presents a unique, touching story. Some minor spelling and grammar issues need addressing. There's room for deeper. So you this is, you know, it sounds reasonable. And then I say, well, what, what was the score? So it tells me that I'm not going to be doing anything else like this that is just really out of the box. Um, it's it's impersonating. Uh, an instructor there. And that's what they tell it, they tell you to do in the writing these prompts is to give it a role because this is essentially role playing. However, if I had a, a, an anatomy quiz and I had all the all, all the all the things I wrote this myself and I wanted to um, have it uh, generate the three wrong answers because I know what I want to have in there. Well, this one, I didn't even do that. I just say, supply a common college freshman appropriate 10 question multiple choice quiz regarding the introduction to human anatomy. So it knocks this out. Now, the cool thing is if I scroll down, it automatically gives me answers here at the bottom. And then it automatically says, 
Um, no, then I say, take all the correct answers and put them in bold font so I can see that. So this is pretty handy. Now, if you had created a test and a lot of people have done this and it's, you know, short answer and a short answer can't be graded automatically. So what you do instead is you create a multiple choice question and then you do this. Now, I'm going to say also, it's really important that um, there, this has no bona fides. The bona fides that I have is I say, well, you know, I studied at MIT, I, I, I've been in education this long, and I can tell you all my experience so that you can have a reason to believe me. The This engine has no bona fides. It has no qualifications whatsoever, and sometimes it will generate things that look as though it's intelligent, and it's when it's called artificial intelligence, the artificial is an important part of that, because so often it'll get things wrong. So anytime you've had it generate something, it's if especially if it's an efficiency, I will encourage you to go back and read everything. And if you have two documents, compare the two documents if you're having it do some writing. However, here's something else you could do. And um, I'm picking on somebody who's attending today. I'm a college composition instructor who's tired of his usual typical assignments. Thinking outside of the box, recommend 10 possible assignments that are creative, challenging, and unusual, exciting as a comp assignment can be. So this is a nice thing where it's going to sort of search all the it's all it's all, all the various databases out there because this isn't a database and it's going to come up with what seems to be like that for you and i've done this a lot with these and some of these are really interesting and really are going to say oh that would work i haven't heard of this but if you do this a lot you tend to see a pattern that it's pulling up the same kind of recommendations a lot which is another telling thing is is the is the AI always finding the best ten things, or is the AI finding the most common things out there and sh sharing those? So its answers tend to perhaps be cl almost cliched at the end of the day. But still, this I don't know what ekphrastic writing is, um, and but this I found uh, a brainstorming. It's a great thing. Now I've got. Uh, Three is three things I, I need to do. I need to come up with something for three of my classes. I need to come up with uh, something that's an icebreaker at the beginning, but I have a fully face-to-face -face class or I have an asynchronous class. So I what I did in my prompts here is I put all three of those in. So I put in, my prompt is student socialization. I have a 10 week course, it's face-to-face -face class. What are 10 ideas that can be used for activities? now? This is pretty much what you would expect. It's not bad. But look, it, on the uh, online synchronous class, it gives me different ideas for how you, to work around that. And then I, had, I did it again for an online asynchronous class. And for those of you who are teaching online and face-to-face -face and, and this, you know the distinctions here are, are giant. So when you're thinking about it and, and you've got to sort of turn that corner for the brainstorming for you, this works really nicely. So sometimes this can cough up some some good advice. And I, like I said, I don't rely on it to do, to do that. Now, hey, Jamie, can you look in chat if if anyone says anything and and just go ahead and interrupt me? Yep, I'll I'll keep an eye on it, Kevin. Thank you, friend. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so those three, I won't go through them because we just have half an hour, um, and I want to make sure that we you just sort of see the breadth of what's possible here. So uh, the next thing is it knows my courses. It knows Moodle. That's another thing worth knowing. So I just said list the activities available in a current version of Moodle, and it go gave those to me. But I've also asked it, um, how can I create a discussion where students are restricted from doing anything until after they've finished the discussion, and it automatically notifies them? Now, that's like four steps in, in uh, my courses to do that. It gave me some pretty good ex examples of how to do that, but it understands my courses. And if you can, you can ask it questions about Moodle. And, and then once again, sometimes it's right. And sometimes it's just not, and it doesn't have any bona fides. It doesn't have, we, just because it speaks in the declarative voice. And that's something that's talked about a lot in these is chat GPT doesn't say to the best of my knowledge is I'm not sure, but. It always is strict declarative sentences and do this, do that, do this. And then, you know, they have programmed in some, some mannerisms for it to say, oh, I'm sorry, I missed that. But it's not. That's just a program. It's not sorry. It just can't do better. It can only do what it can do. So um, 
this is pretty good. So uh, this gone through and given me all this stuff about a Moodle activity. So I say, how can I restrict access to materials and activities in Moodle? Now, you know this probably because you've all used it a little bit, is I can do it's the interactions I'm having are iterative, where it'll give me a first answer, then I'll get a second answer. So my second question, I won't pursue this much further, is can you set up a conditional access to materials and activities based on various criteria, including students' completion of prior activities and so on? And this is all about that. And look what it gives me, a step-by-step -step guide. So this is also just great if you're sort of in the weeds and when it comes to my courses, you know, you can't reach Jamie. Uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a chance that this is going to be correct. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna get into is sort of dicey about whether this is appropriate or not. The nice thing is I don't write policy, but some of these make some sense. Now, I've got a paper markup here that I'm going to use. Now, the paper I'm going to show you or that I'm going to share with the machine is um, this paper right here. And now this is a paper I've downloaded that's a writing samples that are available through an educational source. Um, so here's the paper, and um, I don't want it to grade it, but I, I think that this can probably identify some weaknesses, some strengths. So for in this case, what I've done is I've said, in the voice of a college professor, mark up and correct the following paper, because this is actually a, a paper, the other one I use is a letter, um, focused in grammar and style, be encouraging, put comments in boldface font. So here's the paper I, I put in there, and then here's what it gives me. Um, so this is, um, as you read through this, you can get a sense of, is this your voice or not? Is this appropriate or not? You know, that's, that's anyone's call, but you, you don't even have to have it, um, do that. You can just look for grammatical errors or this or that. So you can see where this could be really handy or perhaps a step too far, but that's not my call. The next paper I have, I have, um, and it always opens at the bottom of the chat. Uh, this, I say, in the voice of a college professor, Mark, I'm correct the following paper letter, focusing on grammar writing, so much the same. And um, and it goes through and does that. And then after it does, it just breaking this into pieces. Now you say, and again now, and focus more on grammar. So it does that. And I know all the scrolling, when you can't read it, you're just sort of having to take my word for it. Um, but you can see, uh, that it, it will alter that and just focus on those specific areas uh, if indeed you having a paper markup is something that would be appropriate in your mind. Okay, another thing it's really good at is simplifying and summarizing. What I have here is I have a, a course that someone gave me this as the as the summary of the course that they wanted at the beginning of the of the LMS. So I broke it up into the LMS into parts so they're not just seeing all this text about this course. Uh, so I put it in chat GPT, same exact document. And I said, break this document and uh, break up, the, I said break this, I meant break up this document and make the language easier to comprehend. So that's what I, that's what I inserted, that's what we just saw. Now it does this and that's better, but I'm not, I'm not liking that. So now I say, now add three header sizes to create visual clarity and accessibility. Here's why I say that, because these headers, headers, uh, the, the main header and two and three, and I only want three levels. Um, I can change these when I paste this into a Word document, but this is automatically accessible. And when I turn, when I, if I don't change the formatting and I save it as a PDF, it'll also be able to be navigated. Let me, let me see if I have the, the finished version of this paper real fast. Let's see, which one is this? I apologize for the welcome to biology. Um, well, let me just do it. So if I take this, all this information right here, and I paste it into um, a Word document. This is the whole shebang. And uh, oops, control new, please. Thank you. All right. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just going to paste this in here right now. 
and I'm going to let it keep its own format. Now, some of these are giant and I can fix, I can fix what, a, what the headings are if I choose to later. I can also ask it to do smaller headings and sometimes it does and sometimes it can't figure that out. But what happens now that I have this in Word is if I come down here and I want to go to um, view navigation pane, there they are. This is great. This did that for me. And you can do this with any paper you've got because the logic it uses is consistently correct. Now, the, another thing I've got to be careful of, if I say clean this up or, or change it, it, if it goes to changing words, you have to go through and read every word that it has changed because you really don't know what it's going to say. So that's simplifying and summarizing and also making it accessible. Um, now I update a document here. Now what I've got is I've got a document. And I'll show you what it is. This is another one that is just an efficiency that you, you might really think is terrific if you have something that's sort of nightmarish and you need to put it in uh, the LMS. This is the document. Now this is some work I did a while back for a company in 2014, obviously. Um, and then it's saying uh, that we have to go through and hit all of these dates. Now, let's imagine that instead of this being just an assignment I've got from some other company, uh, this is maybe a syllabus or a, a schedule for how my course is going to be handled. Well, look at this. These, this this table, I don't want it to be a table anyway, because I, I tables are, are often not in accept, they're not accessible if they're not used in the uh, basically triangulation mode. In other words, you have a, 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 a across the top here, you have a row of information and then a column of information. And then you're just trying to triangulate, you know, what's on Monday on the third. Um, that's what a table is, but this is just a decorative thing. So I wanted to get rid of this and I wanted to just clean up this in general. And so what I did was I, I, uh, copied the entire shebang, the table included. And then I pasted the whole works in here. So I'm saying, and this is complex. Um, and if you're not understanding me, please interrupt because this is going to be a bit of a rabbit hole here, but it's really cool that you can do this. If you've got a class schedule set up where you have all the assignment dates and, and whatnot set, and now the next year has passed and they're no longer, they no longer work. I say, take the document and alter the dates to the spring of 2023, because that was 2014. Allowing that dates that occurred on a given weekday align as close as possible to the same weekday from 2014 to 2024, i.e., and there again, being this detailed is what it needs, i.e., uh, February 23rd, 2014 was a Thursday. Well, this is a Tuesday, so that date would be changed. And I go through and I tell it how to do that. I say, notice weekends, notice holidays. And then it generates this um, after I log it in there. This is what it made for me. And I told it to boldface news headers. So now this document right here, which is, like I said, nightmarish in general and hard to follow, now it's cleaned it up and I went through and I checked these and, and, it, and it was correct in terms of it says the old one was on a Thursday on the 13th. The new one is going to be on a Thursday. It's the 16th. So you can see where if you're redoing something that you've done where you put in all the dates for the students, it's going to go through here. And if you give it that specificity, it can change it. Now, it has both dates on here. So what I do is I go down to the next prompt and I say, are there any names this document? Because it dawns me, oh, I don't want to accidentally share share someone's name, and it and it um, looks, and it says just yeah, just names of stuff, not names of people. People. So now I say redo it with the new dates and no comments or your notes. So it cleans the whole thing up. Now this got rid of a big complicated table for me, right? And this goes over the course of a year, but I noticed that. He's got the, there's all these TBD dates that were in that document. Well, that's something else. I said, go ahead and take out the T, uh, the TBD dates and put in something that makes sense. Um, so now it's gone through and I, I went through and verified this. Just terrific. Now, I'm still getting all of these like uh, four hash marks there. So I'm saying, move all that. And now this has taken me 
oh, probably 15 minutes to redo this entire document. And now I'm going real fast, but you can see at the end of the day, this is just really terrific compared to this nightmare. And it did all of this, uh, interpreting this table and putting it as a list, which is an, another thing I have um, on, on one of the efficiencies here. But just so you know, uh, this, I, I was really impressed by that. Now here's another one. I want to update a syllabus. Um, here's the syllabus. Let me see if I've got it over here. I probably do. Um, oops. Update this syllabus for information from spring of 2024 using boldface font for every change you make. So I've just taken my entire syllabus for ACA and I popped it in there. And then because I may have to make boldface, now I can tell what its changes are, which is great for me. Um, and I will, I can go through and update my syllabus just like that. So this is another clear, you know, win for uh, faculty. Um, table conversion, as I've said before, you can just grab the text and paste it in there. I'm going to go to a couple more things, and then I'm going to show this happen uh, as sort of what you can expect on your side before we wrap here. But let me talk another thing that this, uh, speak about another thing that I found very valuable. That is, if you make a claim and you are, maybe you're asking students to do this because students clearly have access to the same technology, but it, it can it can basically uh, counter my, my argument. And so I found this really interesting. So um, I, I put this prompt, I didn't write, write all this prompt myself. Uh, you're going to act as an expert fact-checking system. I'll provide a statement and you'll tell me whether to the best of your knowledge it's true or false. You'll provide me with links or sources to back up. Your, now that's my addition. You'll pro provide me with links or sources to back up your assessment of statement, which is great because this thing's gonna argue the point that I make. The statement is homelessness is caused by laziness which is you know, a terrific topic to bring, bring up. But look what this does. This is really, this is just fact searching on the other side of it. Um, so it goes in, it gives me these, it uses the bold face font, it gives me the source for each of these. It's just a terrific uh, system for this. And it goes in conclusion, homelessness is a multifaceted issue that cannot be attributed to a single cause and certainly not sim to simple laziness. Addressing homelessness requires comprehensive uh, understanding of these various factors and commitment to providing support. And of course, it sounds really educated because it stole those words from lots of educated people um, or it stole those people for uh, those words from a lot of people that you know are, are on TikTok. Now, happily, this doesn't cruise social media and it doesn't live off of the input that they, that all the users, it doesn't use your information. It doesn't use that to its database because they found that was happening. It was getting very skewed. Okay, um, I've got a, a 500 word summary where it just uh, really uh, took this idea I had and created a summary for it. And you can see where that would be uh, useful in some regard. Um, there again, it's always it's always a coin toss. So that some of that kind of use, if you have your own voice and you have your own intelligence, and sometimes asking this to think is sort of an, a disservice to you um, and more than the machine can do. And then lastly, this is another thing that uh, they say it can be done. So I did it. And of course, this is sort of like a, a heresy here. You're an expert teacher, create a 10 step guide to intro to anatomy, explain each step in detail. Uh, and then it says to put it in simple terms. So it's good at that kind of stuff. You know, how does this have value? Uh, arguably, you know, perhaps not. Um, with that said, um, what I'm going to do lastly is I'm just going to pop one of these papers in here. Um, and I'll just show you in real time. And the reason I didn't do this in real time is because that would have been half of the schedule, just watching it generate stuff. But just so you've seen it happen here, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to put in, um, let's see, I'm going to move this down. I bet it, well, yeah, it lets me. This, I don't know if you have used this feature on um, share a portion of your screen with Zoom. It is great. Anyways, um, I'm just going to say, um, mark up this paper in the voice of an angry professor 
Now, granted, that's probably not good art, but I thought we'd end on a fun note. And by the way, I leave my typos in. It's so smart, let it figure it out. So here we go. As it as it generates, it comes out down there. Uh oh, <laughs> looks like it um, has the one I'm doing is is it's it's putting it it's just as code. <laughs> Jamie, do you have any idea what I put in there that made that think it was, I was asking for it, it to be an HTML or, or that's hysterical. Okay, I'm going to stop generating no. <laughs> and I'm going to say, and I'm going to write here, not in a code box, oops, box, question mark. You could always throw it in the terminal and see what happens. <laughs> oh, believe me, I was trying to do that. It wasn't good. I was trying to create HTML in this for the HTML within the, the um within the lms and it consistently did not function well um so you can see how this works here and this is just putting it in uh parenthetically versus boldface and you can also say um you know uh put it in boldface and two dashes of before and after or whatever you know you think is best for you um and it's pretty easy to do. Um, so this is, it can actually be pretty snarky if you ask it to. If you ask it to be humorous, it is virtually never even vaguely amusing. Okay, with that said, um, that was just me running on for the entire time. Uh, and you sort of have the idea of that. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And um, if anybody, and I appreciate you just sitting through, am I just uh, droning on? If anybody has any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. Um, what are you thinking, Dan? In your there we go. I tried to find the unmute. Um, I forgot the uh, the amount of data that you can actually post into a, a problem. 5,000 characters is what they said, but that's and on one posting. You can then right. add more and more as you go forward, but it's 5,000, right. which means if you have a big paper or something, it really can't do that yeah i mean once again i would use it for academic reasons saying don't change anything except i mean just for me you know except you know comment on grammar and stuff put in boldface font that don't change any words because if you don't tell it specifically not to change stuff sometimes it just does <laughs> um uh, michelle what do you think um uh, thanks for um for all these ideas the one that um i could see myself immediately using and i didn't write down your prompt um good enough to do it would was the accessibility one where you said add three font sizes to create clarity and what was your prompt i'm um, sure all, I, I have all that for you right now let me let me give you the link i've got all oh, these cool. well most of these prompts uh and that in a, a shared space here um this this drive right here has two papers in it, um, and it is, um, let's see if that opens for you. So that has uh, two papers I've, I've put in it. One of the papers uh, is is like 20 page PDF, and it has all the prompts at the beginning with links. So you can click to see the prompt, and then it'll take you to what it spit, what it spit out. The other reason I made this is because the likelihood of this going down was at 95%, because if you're talking about it, it has to stop working. Um, <laughs> so I had that in case this went down. Um, and the other doc, what is the other document in there? Research and documentation. AI. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I thank you so much, Michelle. This I also put in um, basically serious reading that we're not talking about this, but the serious reading on the back side of this, a couple of these documents are really uh, impressive and daunting, and they sort of capture you know current policy thinking at the Department of Ed and really not internationally through with the uh, the Stanford piece. Um, so the, that second that second paper, um, the second paper where I have those links is because I know I wasn't talking about that today. Joan, did you want to share anything today? <clears throat> no, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I am. I use Chat GPT quite a bit. Okay, great. Um, what, and, what, have, what have you found that works for you? Um, well, so my students, I, I'm in the adult, here, let me turn my video on too. I'm in okay. the um, adult ed and literacy department. Mm -hmm. So um, my students don't receive a grade. So I don't have that whole issue. I, um, I'm the program coordinator for the English language program for non-English speakers. So I have found it has been very, very helpful. 
in um, coming up with creative ways, creative classroom activities, games, um, way to initiate conversations, writing activities um, that can be used in the classroom with adult English language learners. Um, and of course, I've used it myself personally on a few occasions to, to, to compose some things. Um, but for school, it's mainly um, it's mainly a resource that I use to help generate ideas for um, yeah for activities and learning um, learning activities and games within the classroom. Excellent. Well, I, I appreciate your, your being here today and, and your comments. Did anybody else have a, something that, you know, either stuck out for this or this that you bumped into that you thought, boy, this was a game changer for me, this in this use? Because a couple of these for accessibility, I just was so impressed because that just, it, that for me is, is literally a game changer since I work with so many people's items that we're trying to make them accessible. I know, Michelle, you do a lot of that too. Um, Dan, anything else? Jamie? Yeah, I actually was. Uh, I'm, I've always wondered about the kind of the continuity of of, of the chats that we make. So, uh, assuming that if we start a new chat, then it's going to be starting. It's it's like the etch a sketch has been shaken at this point. So, <clears throat> as far as like it tracking the conversations, if you're if you're trying to set parameters and having having it to role play or to 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 give some some kind of guidelines uh if you define set certain things so if you i think that's just a technique that I, i'm not really sure how to use yet as as far as if you're trying to set up a, a scenario when you want to stay consistent you should probably stay within that chat rather than starting a new one is that correct yeah it seems to me that you would have one chat perhaps set up like and you can name them like i did today and you can organize them but it takes forever because they always go to the top so what you saw today was me <laughs> moving them all around so so I was loading them from the bottom. But every time you edit it, it goes back to the top. So you have those. But it seems to me if I were an instructor, I would have, uh, a, you know, I would have written down what my, my primary prompts are. And then I would have like one class, another class, another class. And then I could go through if I were using it, you know, whatever the prompt was. And I, I like you were saying, I'd always go back to that same instance. But I would title that instance, you know, class three or whatever. So uh, but that there, I would have already as, uh, put in established what I want it to do, and then I would have played with it, so I wouldn't have to give it make it as iterative. But does that make sense? Because you could always, I guess, you could always come back to it. I don't know they ever disappear. Yeah, and and I think it's 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 a matter of how specific you you want to be in the first place, and if you have a very uh, specific thing in mind, you you can set up yeah. set that up. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just, I greatly appreciate you guys uh, showing up here. And, uh, I hope you got something out of it because really setting, preparing for this was great. It was just, it was a real, it was a real pleasure to, to basically fight with this machine for that long. <laughs> thank you, Kevin. Yeah, that was great. That was awesome. Yeah. Thanks, thank you. Kevin. We really appreciate yeah, you. Thanks so much, Kevin. Hey, and I didn't ask you anything, Sam, because you told me you weren't going to be joining. I'm just saying. <laughs> I was listening. No, oh, I do. No, I, I was like, enjoying. um, I do like, I like the accessibility thing that you showed us. And I like the idea for sure of being able to update like syllabi and stuff and change dates. Holy cow. If I can, like, I was a little intimidated by the depth of the explanation you had to give it to get it to do it accurately. Like, I feel like that shows it's not foolproof and I'll certainly be the fool that'll bungle it. But otherwise, like, those are some great time savers. Yeah, well, the cool thing about that is every iteration, you can say, okay, let's start over, we'll do this, and you know, and then it'll, you can do that. So, um, but yeah, it just, it's, it's like talking to a really bright uh, five-year-old because it, it's, it's understanding of what you're implying. It has no concept of implication. Um, you know, it's like, it's got to be there. And then sometimes things will just be crazy wrong. Uh, I mean, out of the blue, just like, well, I like that code box when that, I put that thing in there. I don't know what it was thinking. I think oh, well. maybe because you typed markup in the, maybe in the instructions, maybe you thought it was HTML or something. That, yeah. That's just a guess. I, th I, I use the word, word markup because I think that ethically is easier for me if I'm an instructor. Mm. <laughs> it's marking up. It's not grading, but it'll mm. grade. Okay. Hey, thanks. Thanks so much, guys. And I really appreciate being here. All right. Thanks a bunch. Thanks. This was very helpful and informative. Thanks. Thanks.